Um, last but not least, I want to invite Nick Stepro, uh, who's the, CV, the CPO and SVP of Arcadia, to talk a little bit about their use case. Nick? Great. Hi there. Uh, you all have me. Okay. Beautiful. Um, yeah, thanks for, thanks for the introduction. And, um, uh, and Brad, uh, in, interesting, uh, as always, to hear uh, peers you know, go, going through similar, similar exercises. So um, I really appreciate that. I, I will start on that. As, um, uh, as Dorothy said, I'm the CPO at Arcadia for population health uh, analytics and, and software firm based out in Boston. I want to give a couple minute overview just of Arcadia and the, the stack that we have and then drill down into the specifics of our analytics ecosystem and how we found a really nice partner in QuickSight uh, driving some of the some of the same outcomes that um, that, that Brad and Ed were just talking about. So um, Arcadia, uh, national healthcare enterprise healthcare data shop. Uh, we uh, have sort of a broad umbrella of software, but um, uh, one of those components is specific to healthcare analytics. Um, our focus area in the healthcare ecosystem, for those that are not um, super well versed in the machinations of the US healthcare system, it's a mess. Uh, and we are focused on servicing the um, uh, value based care segment of that. So, effectively, what that means. Uh, uh, the way most physicians and hospitals earn their money is in a fee-for-service model, which means they literally get paid per service they render. So they are heavily incentivized to render more services. And turns out those services involve, you know, when you're hospitalized and have a heart attack and get your, you know, hip replaced, the expensive services that are reactive in nature. And so a value-based care model flips that incentive and says, instead of us paying for every service that's rendered, we're going to pay per patient and incentivize you to keep patients healthy, effectively keep them out of the hospitals, and that's how you earn your money. As you might imagine, that transition of just waiting for a sick person to show up in your hospital versus proactively having to keep a population of patients healthy uh, requires a tremendous data asset that never before was required, right? You're no longer just reacting to folks getting through your four, four, four walls. You need to proactively manage, reach out to patients, drive wellness programs, et cetera. And that requires pretty robust data architecture. Uh, and that's pretty much the core of what Arcadia does for um, health insurers and large provider hospital organizations nationally. Okay. Um, uh, I think it was Ed that said he's not going to show you a, uh, you know, a big data uh, architecture uh, slide. I am uh, and keep it real fun. I'll go through this quickly, but I just think it's useful to know where um, where the analytics sort of slots into the bigger, bigger Arcadia ecosystem. Um, so our shop, we are servicing um, these healthcare organizations and we are serving up applications and insights to a broad set of different users, right? So those might be physicians at the point of care, they might be administrators, they might be analysts, medical directors, etc. And in order to get the data from left to right, there's a bunch of stuff that needs to happen. So first, we've got this data gateway. Uh, that's where we ingress a bunch of data from a bunch of different sources, right? So think health insurers, think hospitals, community partners, patients themselves. There's a variety of types of data that Arcadia needs to source in order to build that population health picture. Stash that in our S3 lake. That goes through a, um, a stream of data enrichment on the top there. So in real time, we're doing all sorts of cleansing of that. Uh, similar to what you all do, presumably, uh, you deal with a bunch of ugly data. Healthcare is no different. It's a complete mess. Uh, and so there's a lot of work you need to do to try to extract some sanity from the, um, from the, underlying, the underlying data. Um, we have asynchronous big analytic services that happen alongside that. So these are the big batch jobs that do further enrichment. On the bottom, we have a whole enterprise data warehousing, um, enterprise data warehousing model. Uh, and then on the far right is all of our applications. Uh, and one of those applications is this insight suite, um, uh, which is where, uh, where we slot, slot quick sites. So these are the product offerings that Arcadia serves that are strictly around analytics and insights uh, for, our, for our customers' networks, okay? 
that insight suite um, is made up of a big old analytics engine and then three vertical access tiers. Those access tiers are segmented uh, uh, based on the type of user that, that we need to serve data up, up, up to. So on the far left, you have, we have this product called Binary, not gonna get into it today, but that's our prescriptive push style scorecards, right? So this is effectively making sure a medical director gets a PDF that lands on their doorstep every week that is um, static, but very high polish and explains all of their different insights for the folks that don't want to interact with the data, but need access, right? On the far right uh, is our foundry workbench. Um, that's our, uh, sort of what I would call, you know, power tools for the hardcore analysts, right? Those are folks that are directly going to be accessing the database and pounding SQL or Python or whatever they want to do to run statistical models. Um, and we work with a bunch of academic medical centers and they have those folks that, that need to get direct access to data. And then in the middle, we have this need for, for web-based interactive embedded dashboards. And these are for the folks that don't want to pound code, but also need more than just a prescriptive overview. They need to interact with the data, play with it, and generate their own insights, drill down, all that good stuff, right? That's exactly where QuickSight has begun to play a, 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 a sort of pivotal role in our analytics strategy, okay? Um, before I talk about the QuickSight transition, it's worth just giving you the, the background on where we came from. So we've actually had an offering in that middle channel uh, for embedded web-based uh, analytics to our users. We've had that offering since 2013 or so. Uh, we made the decision to drop in embedded web-based analytics. They sat directly alongside all of our other applications. So the care management applications, the things that are interacting with patients and providers. We said right alongside that in the same application, we're gonna have embedded analytics. Um, but this was 2013, we decided uh, that rather than um, licensing third-party software, we were gonna bring our own, um, our own software to the table. And we basically wrote uh, you know, Ruby on Rails uh, middle layer, uh, interacting with D3JS on the front end, and we rolled our own embedded analytics uh, suite. There was a bunch of benefits to that at the time, the first of which is we had big mar market differentiation. If you take yourself back seven years, the offerings for, uh, for analytics were pretty meager and everyone was used to looking at crystal reports or something similar. So being able to offer analytics that looked pretty had a big differentiator in the market when you had to go toe to toe and win business. Um, secondly, user experience and scale uh, of, of, of deployment, um, instead of having to provide licenses and third party software to thousands of users nationally, we said, log into this URL, we're automatically gonna contextualize the user and render up insights just in your web browser, works on all major modern web browsers, piece of cake, right? Um, thirdly, and I, I mentioned this previously, but there, there's, there's value in proximity to operational applications, right? So uh, for those that are active in, in a workflow application, doing work, whether that's caring for patients or doing operational tasks, being able to, in the, in, the same, uh, in the same user experience, being able to tab over and get access to these rich insights without having to break your consciousness is actually really important for, for productivity and user experience and stickiness of users within our application. And then finally, there was value for us in, on, on the margin side, right? Um, we rolled our own, it's all open source under the hood uh, so we can add any number of users we want. And any additional revenue we get from those users is pure, um, uh, you know, pure straight to the bottom line, right? So, so there was a bunch of value in this, but uh, you sort of fast forward a handful of years, and there's a bunch of pain points there too. Um, a couple of the challenges, if you track with me on the on the bo bottom left here of this this pre QuickSight embedded model. Um, really high cost of delivery and support, right? So. Uh, it's D3 and Ruby on Rails and the data backend. And so when all of a sudden you want to add another uh, pie chart or a drill down or an interaction, um, uh, crazy expensive because I need to pay software developers to do all sorts of wiring uh, within that system. Um, 
there's a fused data architecture problem. So in order to get information to appear on this, it needs to go through that, that object layer, middle layer web server, and all of a sudden you've got to, you know, to add a new column, you've got to add it to the data model and then add it to the middle layer, object layer, and then add it to the front end. And you've got three different engineering teams touching something just to add, uh, you know, a new type of data. Um, Lack of serviceability by analysts. You guys may experience this if you have a heavy approach here. The folks that know the domain, that the data analysts, if they are not the ones building the analytics, but they're building a requirements document that then goes to a software development team to build the analytics, uh, uh, crazy inefficient and leads to a lot of misses, you know, on, on that sort of game of telephone of requirements, right? Um, Lack of native interactions or, or the requirement to program native interactions yourselves. Um, there's issues with data access and provisioning. When you own all of this, you basically have to build your own row level security directly into the, to the model layer. Um, and there's performance issues, right? You're, you're constrained based on the web server, but also on the um, underlying, underlying database, which you can constantly tune and add resources to, but um, uh, not quite as dynamic as what what we have now in QuickSight. So um, about a year ago, we began the transition, moving all of our embedded analytics over to QuickSight. Um, we now have a, a few customers in beta. We're going full GA, I think, in the next month. Uh, and it's been a wild success, which I'll, I'll happily talk more about in a minute. Um, the benefits that that I've seen, and for for your background, we did a you know a similar vendor scan across. Um, uh, across sort of the, the BI ecosystem, looked at a number of the big players that you might expect, settled on QuickSight. We are already an AWS shop, so a lot of that data pipeline guts that I, that I showed you a little earlier, that's driven within the AWS ecosystem. Uh, so it was a little bit easier to make that, to make that decision, but there's also a number of um, uh, benefits, not the least of which, um, you know, Dorothy described as the, um, uh, the, the, the favorable pricing model on, on sort of a per use basis. Um, the other benefits that we saw, so the, the key benefit for us is low cost of development and support. Um, we've abstracted away all of those layers and our analysts now are the ones designing dashboards and they hit deploy and they are immediately propagated across you know, all of our customers, thousands of users nationally. Um, there's this data agnostic uh, uh, model here, which is really important to us. We can actually grab data directly from the lake and uh, and ingress it all the way through to these analytics without having engineers having to do all of this wiring uh, for mm -hmm. us. So we have this beautiful decoupling now, which adds some nimbleness. Um, we've got row level security baked in, which is awesome. Um, that performance boost with Spice is great. So if we want to go directly against um, uh, RDS, we can. If we need that performance boost, we uh, jam it into that in-memory um, uh, Spice model. And we, you know, for large data sets, have highly performant um, uh, applications. There's a couple of challenges that's, that still exist, so I'm, I, the, uh, the QuickSight team has been a really wonderful partner and has, um, has included a lot of these in their roadmap, and to their credit, they've really hit their roadmap time and time again. What they commit to, they hit. Um, but a, a couple of the areas, you know, there's some provisioning issues in, in terms of having native mechanisms to provision these across uh, multiple different tenants uh, and different customers. Uh, we've built a sort of a workaround administrative layer on top of that. Uh, they've recently rolled out a number of capabilities that will obviate that need, which I'm very excited about. Yeah. Um, and the, the concept of theming, uh, which uh, is is to say there is there is there exists a theming API to sort of make this your own, and that is actually expanding, which is great. But um, there is an obvious trade-off that one needs to make when you when you own control over painting every pixel on the screen, uh, you fully own the brand, ex the brand experience. If you go into a, um, a third-party BI platform, whether it's QuickSight or anything else, you sort of necessarily have to surrender some of your ownership over that brand alignment uh, and, and the visual polish that comes with that. And to us, that was a, uh, a super valuable, it was a, a worthwhile trade-off to make. And with some of the expansion on that theming API, we'll be able to even more finely tune and and um and keep that brand brand alignment for for a group like arcadia um design is constantly top of mind uh it's baked into our brand dna and so it's really important that we don't 
uh, drop in clumsy or misaligned user experiences uh, into our into our stack. Okay. Um, last piece here is just looking forward. Uh, uh, We've got a number of capabilities available today thanks to the QuickSight team. The one big item that we're waiting on for launch is to actually let our customers author their own dashboards. The way Arcadia works, we are the builders of these, these content and we ship them to our customers that access it via our web portal. There are new capabilities that will enable our customers to do their own authoring and ship it directly to their portal in a way that's a little bit more um, uh, supportable than, than um, uh, you know, managing access rights directly within our AWS umbrella. Um, but the biggest, the most important thing, which uh, I, I believe Ed and Brad stated, um, the transition to QuickSight lets us focus on what our customers really care about, which is not necessarily those features, it's the content. And we've, we were so handcuffed on trying to keep up with features and build software, we were not building analytics quickly enough. And so now we have a robust roadmap of analytical content where we can ship and we staff that team with just analysts and data scientists, not with a whole, whole army of software developers that need to, to sit alongside them. And so that's been the true success story for me and, and what our customers have been really excited about. So that's the case study. Um, I hope that was helpful for some. Um, and, uh, and thanks again to the AWS and QuickSight team for, um, uh, for being a part of it. Well, thank you, Nick. I think that was super useful and insightful case study um, as I hear you talk and, and very balanced as well. <laughs> and uh, expanding that theming capability um, is really important, I know, for both for you and for our customers. As I said, I mean, it's as a you own your app ex experience and you want that analytics experience to be part of your app. You don't, there's some trade-off but we're going to try to make that trade-off as little as possible for you um i have one last we're actually kind of short on time but i kind of want to ask you one question um mm -hmm. if you would do this you know we have audience here have uh one of the questions our audience have submitted is you know what are the differentiations with quicksight um you kind of alluded to some of this um before and rather than me talking about it, I kind of want to see from your perspective and when you were evaluating vendors across the board, what were some of the things that jumped out at you? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. The pricing, as we discussed, is a um, is a big differentiator. Just in that um, we're paying per 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 access um, and for for an organization that has thousands of users that need access to, to analytics, but not all of them yep. need daily or monthly access. That's really favorable. Um, the, the other thing, and, and Brad and Ed mentioned this, is the, the concept of partnership for Arcadia and that concept of hitting your roadmap. Um, there's a number of vendors out there. They don't all have the might that um, AWS and QuickSight has and their ability to execute on that roadmap in the past year while we've been working with them is, is incredible and lends a lot of confidence to where they're gonna be relative to the market prospectively over the next 12 to 24 months. And so that's been, um, uh, th those two aspects have been um, have been huge for us. Yeah, especially as you're looking at, you know, you, you want to get a solution out to the market quickly as well. And being part of the overall ecosystem is going to allow you to be able to kind of get that solution up and running quickly, that speed and agility in particular. So thanks a lot, Nick. And uh, thanks for the rest of um, the audience for attending today's session. Thank you for all that you do um, for and with AWS as our value partners. And I hope this session was helpful in helping you to kind of speak to your customers about BI modernization and what are the services that AWS offer when it comes to BI integration analytics.